Bigger and better. Find out how God can use the big things of your past and work out a future for you beyond your wildest dream. Here's Pastor KK Baby of the Passion Story Church. Hallelujah. Oh, 2018 is powerful. Hallelujah. Oh, 2018 is not going to leave anyone behind. You are all entering and you are entering and finishing it. Hallelujah. So by that proclamation, we are already in 2019. Amen. Yeah, I have seen that none of us here died in 2018. I have seen that none of us here was admitted in hospital. It's a better year. It's the year where God himself is reigning supreme in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And so we are going to be sharing one or two juices from the Bible. Are you ready for some juice from the Bible? Yeah, it's wonderful. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for tonight. We pray that even as we share your word, you will be with us. And I pray that none of us, yes, none of us shall leave this place unless we have encountered you and encountered what you have for us so that we will be able to understand that you who called us is more than faithful. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are saying 2018 is the year of bigger and better. Hallelujah. So I don't know about you, but that's how we are going. We are going into the bigger and better year of 2018. Hallelujah. So we are talking about qualitative increase and quantitative increase. Hallelujah. So bigger, we are talking about things that are increasing by God's grace for us in terms of quantity. And we are also thinking about things that God is giving to us in increase in terms of quality. When we get, we are talking about better. So today, um, open your bulletin uh, to the very middle page. And shall we all read together um, the verse that starts, Job chapter 8 verse 7, the message version. The verse that starts with even though. So, on the count of three, shall we all read together? Go. Even though you are not much right now, you end up better than ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. I know some of you are thinking, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm already powerful already. But wherever you are, there's more that must be given to you. Hallelujah. Oh, never, never stop. You see, when you stop growing, you start dying. So continue growing. Now, I know some of you are thinking, so what am I supposed to be doing in my life every time? Am I supposed to be evaluating my life? And if I'm evaluating my life, how am I supposed to be doing it? Am I supposed to be doing it? Uh, where, where am I getting my inspiration from? Well, your inspiration is coming from no other person than God himself. How do I know that? Right from creation story, the Bible says that God was creating, and as he was creating, he kept reviewing. The Bible says, after creating, he would look back and say, and he looked back on it, and he says, what well, everything was what? Good. So we should also be evaluating our lives. Jesus Christ was born. The Bible says in Luke 2.52 that as he was born, he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and in favor with men. Meaning that there was an evaluation of his life that they could see that Jesus was born and from each time you take subtraction of how where he is now and where he used to be, you can see powerful improvement. Hallelujah. Amen. 2018, we are going to see a powerful improvement in your life. I don't see, I don't know where the improvement is going to come. I mean, I'm going to come to those areas. But you, you, one of the things you're going to see that every month, you are going to see that you are improving. Some of you, you are going to be improving in the place of marriage. Hallelujah. You'll be improving the time that you will not sleep on one bed alone. Hallelujah. Hey. Ah. Ah. Some of you, suddenly you are going to realize that, oh, you used to walk with two legs to work. I remember one day I went to work 
like that. I want to work. I, I mean, when I went to work, I just went to my chief executive's office. And I went to say hi to him. So I was leaving the office and then he says, Don't you want that car? I was like, Ah, is this? Uh, I didn't say it to him, but I was like, ah, Is he a question to ask? Like, really? Like, seriously? And that was the day I started driving. So I, I took truck truck to work and I. Uh, <laughs> Ah, so when I got home, the people and they were not used to me. I, I was tonguing on the horn. Pee, 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 pee. Nobody was stopping it. He said, Oh, some taxi driver be is passing. It's not a taxi driver. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of you here, you are going to realize that suddenly you are getting a new desire to read the word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. God wants us to be, be getting better and better all the time. When he finished creating Adam in Genesis 1 28, the Bible says, He said to them, Can you see the words that are there? Powerful words. I've highlighted them for you. And why he says, What? Be fruitful. Meaning that what? Grow. Bear fruit. You know, anybody who bears fruit uh, increases or multiplies themselves. Hallelujah. You are going to multiply yourself. Amen. I see somebody. I don't know. I don't know who that person is. But either your catalog or your magazine or something about you. You multiplied yourself in terms of an advertisement somewhere. And suddenly somebody somewhere is reading about you. And as they are reading about you, they said, Ah, let's call this person. Hallelujah. I don't know who that person is, but take it for yourself. Hallelujah. And it says, increase, 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 increase. So this are, look at the words God is using. God is saying, increase. Some of you, I, I don't know. You know, Ghana, sometimes we, are, we grow into a certain mentality. And we are thinking, oh, God is saying here, increase. Hallelujah. Some of you, you feel like traveling, but you are afraid. Oh, somebody should increase. Hallelujah. Another way, he said, fill the air, fill the place. Some of you, you need to just go out there. Some of you, God has placed some things inside of you. You are not filling the earth with it. Go, take it. Amen. Yeah. It says, subdue the earth, rule over the fish, rule over everything. So in order to be bigger and better, we must be ready for some four things I want to share with you. You need to understand those things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Number one. You need to forget the big things. To get bigger, you need to forget the big things. Hallelujah. If you want to get bigger, you must forget the big things. And the big things include the big good things and the big bad things. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Good is the enemy of great. Good is the enemy of great. If we fail... To continue to add on to what God has given to us. We will stagnate. Paul said in Philippians 3.13. One thing I do. Forgetting what is behind me. And straining on. Towards what God has for me. I know how the past can cripple us sometimes. I know some of us are looking on 2017. And some of the things... We regret how we wish it didn't happen the way it happened. Some of you, it's not 2017. Some of you, it was way before 2017. Everybody makes mistakes. Recently, somebody asked me a question. Whether I regret some of the mistakes I made. As much as I wish, if, if I could reorder my life, I would change some things. I can't do anything about it. The past is not like an eraser or a pencil that you write and you can clean. 
I know some of you could have wiped, so you, would have, you wish you could wipe some things away. Some of you, your slate is still clean. I pray that you don't walk into some things. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that you regret. But sometimes, the way I see life, sometimes, sometimes, Peter has to deny Jesus before he learns. I don't know. But I have seen it in life. But I pray it doesn't become your portion. Amen. Yeah. You've made some mistakes. It's okay. I know some of you achieved some big things. Forget about them. They are bigger things. Hallelujah. Yeah. The second thing I want you to understand is your future is not ahead of you. It's inside of you. This is, a, this is a big one. A lot of people think, you know, it's our DNA rhymes that spoils us. And I grow up, I will be a doctor. I will be a doctor. The day we grew up, we don't even know. So we kept saying, when I grew up, when I grew up. It used to happen to me until I realized the day I became 30 years old. I kept saying, when I grow up, when I. I realized that I've already grown up. Your future is trapped inside of you. Therefore, the way to discover your future is self-discovery. When you discover who God has created you to be, you will naturally become better. A lot of us see the better of us outside. And that's a big mistake. Some people, and that's what happened to some of these musicians. Uh, after getting all the fame they think that their future is out there so they rely on fans people who see their future out there rely on fans to stay on fire but your fire is already inside of you the, the bible says in Ephesians 3 verse 20 that God is able to do what exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think and it is according to the power that is at work inside of us there's a fire inside of you that is more powerful than any fans. And as you ask God, this year I want you to ask God, God, who did you make me to be? I went to South Africa about six years ago. And I was preaching to this girl. And as I was preaching to her, I was finding ways and means to reach her. I wasn't getting her. Then God gave me this analogy. And I asked her, when you have a problem with your phone you know nowadays most of us when we buy the phones we don't open the manual because we all think we know a friend of mine bought a phone and he was watching a, a movie on the phone and he turned his eyes off and when he realized that the movie stopped immediately he turned his eyes off so he thought there was something wrong with the phone he was trying to get to the phone and soon he realized that they said there's a feature called what intelligent pause or something of that sort that when you turn your eyes off so he didn't know each time he was watching a movie then he turns his eyes off, then the thing stops ah ah i'm just drinking water most of us that's how we do so i ask the girl when you get a, a problem with your phone what do you do so i go and ask a friend when you want to know the reason why something was made don't ask the thing itself or don't ask people who are around they don't know the real person who knows the person who made it. Amen. For you to be better in 2018, uh, I promise you uh, that the way to go is to discover who you are. Your future is trapped inside of you. The Bible says that when God made trees and everything, he placed the seed of the fruit inside the, 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 the fruit itself. So your future is already inside of you. Your potential is already trapped inside of you. Number three, your great future is already in God's past. Can you believe that? The future you are thinking about is already in God's past. Because God, you see, each time you go and you are seeing a building that is being built. You know, there's this beautiful building right across the street. The first day they started digging the ground. Well, I realized that it is going to be a sterile building because... When they were digging the foundation, I realized that when the laborers go and stand in the foundation, you couldn't see their heads. So once it's six feet, it's going to be a story building. So when I saw the story building being built, I just realized that, oh, okay, 
It could likely be a, a story, but I didn't know how it was going to look like. I saw them digging. But the owner of the building or to the con con uh, contractor of that building, the building was already built. They built the building before they start building. And that's what we call plan. Because when you finish building, you know where the rooms are going to be. You finish, you actually have to finish building. You know, everything is created twice. Everything you see is created twice. All of us here were created twice. You were created first as an idea, and then you were created as a physical person. So, all that we are ever going to do has already been created and done by God. That's why God can boldly say in Jeremiah 29 11 that what? He knows the plans he has for you. And they are plans of good. So, in 2018, I don't want you to waver at all. I want you to think that God, my future is already in your past. Therefore, I partner with you. And I like the prayer we are praying. I don't know, I think Alex was leading us. Psalm 139, 16 says what? All my days were written in your book before one of them came to pass. Each time Valeria and I were praying, one of the prayers we pray is that God, lead us. Lead us into the path of righteousness. You know, every believer, there's a path for you. That path, when you find it, everything else will respond to you. And I want each one of you here, as you are entering to 2018, I don't want you to just walk about and think that you are some ordinary person that, you know, one time I was driving and I was in the middle of some bush somewhere. And I was thinking, hey, if something happens to me here, who will find me? And I heard the voice of God thinking, saying to me, do you think you are alone? Hallelujah! 2018, God is working for you. I said 2018, God is working for you. Hallelujah. Therefore, in this 2018, we are going to partner with God. Ah, 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 ah. And as we partner with Him, we are going to deliver what is already in His past. You know why? Because He's the Alpha and Omega. He has already passed through this journey. It's like somebody who has, sometimes, how many of you have been watching a movie or you have watched a movie with somebody who has already watched a movie before? I know it can be boring. When you say, hey, hey, Obekuna, Obekuna, you say, oh. If you are like me, I'll tell you the person to shut up because I want to also receive the suspense. <laughs> but Valeria always wants to know, hey, then, oh, yeah, you see you to watch that thing. Oh, God has already watched the movie of, on your life already. Hallelujah. And as you, Listen, some of you, you are looking at the thing. Hey, oh, happy. Hey, 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 hey. Please be still. You see, I had a very nice analogy of uh, the disciples and Jesus Christ. Do you know that the disciples and Jesus Christ, the disciples shouldn't have, if the disciples were really listening to Jesus, eh, they should have never, never had any problem when the winds and the storms were coming. Do you know why? Because Jesus kept saying, I will die on a cross. I will die in three days time I will resurrect. And so, if they were really listening to Jesus, they would have known that Jesus didn't say that he would die on the sea. Hallelujah! So as they were, the sea was coming, they should, they should go and sleep some. Yeah, you know, you would die. Yeah, you know, you see your we all sleep. Some of us, we have forgotten what God's word has said. That's why we are fretting. You have forgotten that God said that he has good plans for you. Hallelujah. Now I see that some of you, eh, God will bless you and you'll be surprised. Hey! You know, those blessings that you didn't especially pray for. You know, some of us, we are, you know, sometimes we want to have some testimonies. Eh? Some of us want to craft our testimonies and then I fasted for three days and when I fasted for three days in the night I dreamt 
When I dream, somebody woke me up and I told the person, hey, wait, I've not finished dreaming. I'm going back into the dream, you know? Those testimonies, when you share them in church, people clap for you. Ah, But I'm telling you, God is going to serve you and bless you even without you praying. Hallelujah. No, I mean this thing. I said, this year, you know why God is going to bless you that way? Because he had already planned it before you thought about it. I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just speaking. Finally, for those who think that maybe you have done something and because you have done something, you have destroyed God's plans. Yes. Some of us did some things that brought delays into our lives. But I like this verse. And I want us to read in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 If you have a Bible You can turn with me To Ephesians 1 11 Very very powerful scripture There <clears throat> Alright It says In him We were also chosen In him We were also chosen Having been predestined According to the plan of him who works out everything. And this is the part I like. According to the plan of him. Who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. God works out everything to conform to his purpose. God is that big. It doesn't matter what, how far you have gone. God can reorder and rework things to fit the plan he already had for you. Hallelujah. So therefore, do you know the way to go? The way to go is that it, wherever you find yourself. Yes, I know some of you say you have wasted time. But wherever you find yourself, if you can get to God and say, God, I surrender this place where I am to you now. God can take it and bring it back onto the track. If you look into my own life, you would have said I've wasted a lot of time doing some stupid things. But even me, God did not leave me behind. God will not leave you behind. Hallelujah. So, tonight I want to share with you six places that we should get bigger and better in. Now, where, where am I getting the energy? Where, where am I getting the energy to say that? It's from 2 Timothy 2.22. The Bible says we should pursue these things. So, this in, in, in 2018, we are going to pursue these six things very powerfully. Number one, we are going to become better at understanding God's grace for us in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know what grace is? Grace is undeserved favor. And I came here to announce to you, there are some things that you don't deserve. God is going to give it to you in 2018. Amen. No, some of you didn't hear me. If you heard me, you would have shouted more than that. Listen, I said, this is grace. I'm telling you that in 2018, now, the word grace means that you didn't pay for it. You don't deserve it. If they were sharing it according to any other, it was not according to you. It will never meet you. Even your great grandchildren and two of them die. But I'm telling you that there is grace. Now, 2 Corinthians 9, it says that, and God is able to make all grace abound to you. You see, each time you are reading the Bible, you see the word grace, you should be very afraid. Because God is giving you something you don't deserve. And I came here to tell you in 2018, God is going to give you some things you don't deserve it. It is not according to anything you have done, but God will just let it happen. It will come to you, it will fall on your laps like that. Hallelujah! So, we are going to get better at grace. Some of us, eh? We are too accustomed to working for things. We are too accustomed. So, uh, Pastor Cake, are you saying that we shouldn't work for things? No, that's not what I'm saying. By all means, work for what you want to work for. But I'm saying that God too is a God of grace. Do you know what that means? What that means is that God loves giving us things we have not worked for. Ah, what are those? No. No, this is the voice I hear. I don't know. Where are those who are going to get health 
in 2018 when they don't have to pay any money for it. There are some people. There are some people. You see? There is a psychological situation. I've forgotten the name of it. But there's a psychological situation where maybe when some people uh, have an accident, maybe people have an accident in their car, the whole people die, and then you alone don't die. There's a psychological situation that is given, name that is given to it. So, people actually, when they come out, they regret that they didn't die. And all these people died, and they didn't die. I think that, uh, yeah, the last time I read about it, I was very surprised. Should this be a problem? If it's a problem, convert it into thanksgiving. <laughs> hey, know that it is called grace. Hallelujah. It is called grace. God is just giving it to you. In 2018, watch, you watch this page. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's for somebody here. The person just shouted, Amen. Amen. In 2018, we are going to get bigger in deploying our gifted purpose. You know what your gifted purpose is? What God created you to do. Listen, some of you, are, or not some of you, everybody here is gifted. The unfortunate thing is that a lot of us don't discover it. But in 2018, you are going to discover why God brought you here. And what you are doing, something small, some of you just designed something small. Or you, some of you are just going to bake a cake. But somebody will cut the cake. Somebody influential is going to cut the cake. And when we get to the, the confessions, you see there, Joseph. Joseph. When Joseph, it got to Joseph's turn, the Bible says that he was in prison. Then all of a sudden they mentioned his name. Who can do this? And somebody says, there's no other guy than Joseph. That is somebody's story this day in 2018. No. I see somebody here. You are going to be discussed in a boardroom. Amen. Amen. No, it's the year of bigger and better things. So, some of you are thinking, "Oh, you just passed by this uh, 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 watch night service." No. God brought me to tell you that it is a bigger and better year. Number three. You are going to get back better at studying and applying and sharing God's word. I know some of you are struggling with the word of God. Many people are fighting with the word of God. You know why you are fighting? You are not fighting with the word of God. It is somebody that is fighting with you because you are naturally made up of the word of God. So you naturally want more of the word. The only thing if you are not liking it, then it means that somebody is the one preventing you and blocking you from the word. So this year, you are going to win the war. Over the word. Hallelujah. Oh, I see somebody who is walking in the fullness of God's word. Busyness will not affect you this year. In 2018, you would have time for the word of God. In 2018, when you have challenges in your dreams, as you are dreaming, somebody is bringing a sword against you. You will stand up and you will quote a scripture and you will win the war in your dreams. Too much with this lack of victory in our dreams. Some of us, you dream, then you are wearing kindergarten dress. And the dress is even on your chest. You say, ah, why am I in kindergarten? Then you see your kindergarten teacher. A, A, B. Somebody is winning that war in their dreams. You will never retrogress. Hallelujah. There's, I see somebody here. In your dreams, you will win the war. Do you know why you will win the war? Because you, are, you see, when we dream, it's our spirit that fights. And when it's our spirit that is fighting, the Bible says that the word in John 63 that the, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. And it says, The word I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. So anyone who is ingesting the, the word of God into their system is just injecting more and more life into their system. It's like blood transfusion. Hallelujah. Oh, that's why you are going to win the war in your dreams. You say what? Somebody say, they are going to do you medicine. Let the person go and do it. In Ephesians 3, uh, uh, Colossians 3, the Bible says that 
when Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him. And these Juju people, they have this uh, 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 utensil or calabash, they pour water inside, and they call people's name. Let them make a mistake and go and call your name. Because your life is the life of Christ. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. The life I live, I live by faith in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four. Oh, we are becoming bigger on loving others. Hallelujah. So we are having better marriages in 2018. We are having better relationships in our offices, in our schools, in our rooms, everywhere. The things that they used to see, it takes two to fight. Somebody will bring the fight, but you'll be surprised that you are looking at them and smiling at them. Say, oh, hi. I know some of you. You have said those things before. Do you know me? My heart is not good. Oh, but 2018 is the year that people will be surprised. Hey, this girl whose heart is not good, his heart, her heart is suddenly turning good. Hallelujah. You see, some of us, eh, you don't know that you see, when Jesus said that when they slap you, turn the other cheek. I know all of us, when we got to that part of the Bible and we read, we saw that it was very stupid. The only way you realize you can do that is when your eyes are not open. Either you are dead or you are drunk. That is why God gave you the Holy Spirit. It is only when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are drunk in the Spirit. That's when somebody slaps you and you will turn your head. The guy who wrote the message Bible. I think it's called Eugene Peterson or so. His mother had taught him that when people uh, uh, do things, he should not respond. So uh, there was a boy who was always bullying him. Bully him, bully him, bully him. So each time he goes home and complains, the mother says, Oh, don't worry. Turn the other cheek. One day, when the uh, he met a guy when he was coming from the from school. The boy tried bullying him. Then by mistake, he just stretches out and realized that, oh, just by stretching out, he held the guy's shirt and he could lift the guy. He lifted the guy, brought him up and down, put him down, sat, put his knees and locked his arms on the floor and gave him some one or two punches. So just one or two punches the guy's nose was bleeding. Then he remembered that, hey, hey, I'm a Christian. So he told the guy, will you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? <laughs> will you accept Jesus? And the boy says, no. Gave him one or two punches. More blood coming. I said, will you accept Jesus? The boy said, yes. He said, say this after me. <laughs> At least he won a soul for Jesus. <laughs> oh, 2018, you will love people. Hallelujah. If it's your husband, it's your wife, you are going to sacrifice for the person. Hallelujah. I keep telling people, marriage. And I want people to come to me. I tell them, can you forgive this person? If you can't forgive this person, then you can't marry. If you, now, if somebody asks me, what is the one one criteria? Forgiveness. In the whole love thing that's written in First Corinthians thirteen, eh, if there's one thing that I can use an eraser to clean, it will be the part that says, "Love does not keep a record of wrongs." But this year is somebody is, is 2018. Somebody is enjoying the peace of God. It's enjoying the love of God, and you are going to get love others as well. Hallelujah! And number the last but one, we are going to enjoy peace with God and peace with others. Hallelujah! It's the year of no anxiety. Hallelujah! You'll be anxious for nothing. Nowadays, you can't listen to news and not be anxious. Now it is, even if you are not listening to news, somebody will send it to you on WhatsApp. The Ghana Police Service has issued this statement that they are throwing eggs at your car. When you see this thing, don't stop. When this number calls, you don't pick. When this thing, this thing, don't do it. This thing, this thing, this thing, don't do it. 
days. Some of you, too, when those things come out of fear, some of you, my friends, they will never forward anything to me. When it is something about forward to 12 friends, otherwise you die, then they forward things to me. They want me to be their savior. They never say hi to me. They only forward things to me when they, are, they don't want to die. Some people wake up. Some of you have been forwarding things to me. Hey, hey. Me, when I see those things, I just laugh. And I saw it this time more scary. That Adeboye one. It has gone, son. How many of you have seen the Adeboye one? It has gone now. It has come again. Adeboye says he didn't write it. Some people say, yeah, it is him. Hey. Oh, in this, in 2018, you are going to have the peace of God. You'll be able to rest. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to have nice sleeps. Hallelujah. When you close your eyes to sleep, you will sleep. Hallelujah. And when you wake up, you realize some of you, you sleep. Oh. But when you, some of you sleep, but when you wake up, you feel you have been busy. Who oh, die? But I said, you have been very busy in your sleep. So it's as if you never rested. Oh. In 2018, you is a year of rest for you. Hallelujah. The peace of God is going to calm down your hearts. Hey, 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 hey. I don't know how many of you were in Ghana when that famous earthquake thing came. Somebody called me that. Ah, I was sleeping. I, felt, I thought I was dreaming. Person called me a rabbi. She's called a rabbi. said, an earthquake is coming from Ada. Ah. So I, I shook myself and said, Ah. So I said, Okay. So you and Valeria get out of the house right now. An earthquake is coming. From, ah. When did earthquake come? And it in, so I just slept. Oh! Hey, you and Valeria, leave the house, leave the house, leave the house right now. I, I know that I have a lot of lovers. So I switched off my phone. Thankfully, Valeria, I don't know what happened to her phone that day. Nobody called. I think the phone was off. And I put cloth on Valeria to sleep well. Then I turned to a cooler place on the bed and slept. <laughs> Only to wake up in the morning to see people's TV. I, I don't know why people are saving TVs. I don't know TVs. TVs especially. TVs especially were outside the houses. Oh, some of you, you will hear some things, but you will still be very relaxed. Hallelujah. And last, last one. We will be better at choosing who to work with. Some of us, we have to change some companies. We need to change some people who are influencing us wrongly. Oh, but that's the year coming for you. Hallelujah. The year, the Bible, today I was sharing with a group of people that Psalm 1 verse 3 talks about, and uh, in some versions it says what? And he shall be like a tree uh, planted by living waters. His leaves shall not wither. And I was saying that, but if you read, verse 1 and 2, especially the verse 1. The verse 1 talks about the characteristics, the things the person does not do. And he mentions three things. Number one, he says that the person does not follow the counsel of the wicked. So he does not follow advice from people who are of the world. Nowadays, music is giving us a lot of advice. I hear nowadays, uh, uh, listen, day nursery, you go to crash. And they are doing their graduation. Then children will be holding microphone. I need a sponsor. If you don't know how date your father, then parents are clapping. Yeah, that's my son. Hallelujah. We shall choose our company right. We shall choose what we listen to right. Oh, it's a bigger and better year. Hallelujah. And by the time we get to the end of the year, I believe all of us here are going to get bigger and better. You are going to get bigger and better. And before you realize it, oh, you see, some of us, you know, I meet so many people. I met a certain guy. Two days ago, he came to me and said, Pastor KK, I, 
How, how can I stay constant with God? I told him it's so easy. It's easier than you think. You can stay constant. You see, it's like coming to me and asking me, how, how can me and Valeria constantly stay? The question is, is you know, marriage or relationships, 85% of it is communication. And so for every relationship to be sustained, 85% of it is communication. And as we are able to communicate, we are able to accomplish things that we never thought we, can, we could accomplish. Hallelujah. 2018, I see that God is going to, God is requiring people. He's requiring people who are going to surrender themselves unto him. He has so many things he wants to use us for. It's a bigger and better year. It's a bigger and better year. God bless you for listening. Don't forget that God's word has the power to change your life. We humbly invite you to worship with us this and every Sunday at the Passion Story Church premises, Bowie Zero, at 8 a.m. prompt. For more information, contact us on 0277-930-826, 0277-930-826. Remain inspired by Jesus' story. I'm not afraid of